Hi, and thank you for joining us today. Today, I'm going to talk about an Oracle Database 23C new feature called Oracle JSON Relational Duality. My name is Sean Stacy, and I'm an outbound product manager with Oracle's database development team. Let's start by taking a look at why many organizations are turning to JSON to store their data. A JSON document is a document model format that developers use in their application code. JSON documents are self-describing and consist of fields, which are name value pairs that can be in any order and nested or arranged in arrays. JSON has become popular among developers as it is both schemaless as well as supports schema evolution. The JSON syntax is derived from JavaScript object notation syntax, but the JSON format is text only. And code for reading and generating JSON data can be written in any programming language. In this example, we can see that name one is a string as it is enclosed within double quotes. Name two is a nested set of name value pairs consisting of name three and name four. Name three, which I assume is storing a timestamp, is being stored as a string because it too is also enclosed within double quotes. Meanwhile, name four has no double quotes, so it's a numeric value. Oracle has supported JSON in the database for many years. It was introduced in 12.102 in 2014, which was the same time as database in memory. Initially, JSON was stored as a clob or varchar2 with a check constraint to enforce the JSON document syntax. Oracle database customers typically turn to JSON to solve three business use cases. One, for storing attributes associated with a row of data. For example, when working with machine learning, where there may be many different attribute combinations to support an individual AI model. Or two, for application extensibility via flex fields. For example, when extending an existing application to support additional fields of information without the necessary requirement of changing the data model or UX of the application. The third approach is for uh, using it as a place to store data that naturally conforms to a document layout or a document-centric application. Oracle has continued to enhance its support for JSON in subsequent database releases with features such as the SQL JSON function, JSON transform, and JSON data guide, to name but a few. JSON documents can be stored in an Oracle table using the native or binary JSON data type. As we see here for the student doc column of the student schedule table. The JSON data type is a first class database object, meaning that it is supported with all Oracle database features, tools, and utilities. It's also possible to index as well as query JSON documents using the regular doc notation syntax. Relational data can be returned or passed as JSON documents using the SQL JSON function, and JSON data can be transposed to appear as tables and columns using JSON data guide. The Oracle database comes with a rich set of APIs to support native JSON-based applications, including SODA or simple Oracle document access for accessing and operating upon collections of data using QBE or query by example and filter operations, as well as a MongoDB API for applications that have been developed to use MongoDB commands. The Oracle database also provides standard DML or data manipulation language access to documents via SQL, including stored procedures. The Oracle database also provides full ACID consistency across documents, meaning that JSON documents can be exposed to other Oracle features like analytics, spatial, graph, machine learning, parallelization on documents, all in real time. And for customers who are looking for a standalone document store where the administrative tasks or supporting the document store is handled for you, Oracle has a fully autonomous serverless JSON database offering. So let's take a look at an example here. We can see here that we have a simple class schedule for a student named Jill. Jill is enrolled in two classes, and we can also see the time, the room, and the teacher for each class. 
The SQL developer approach to solving this problem is to create four tables. And we can see from left to right, the student table contains the student ID, the student name, and some student information. And then we have the teacher table with the teacher ID, the teacher name, and some additional information. And then we have a course table. And the course table contains the course ID, the course name, the room, the time, as well as the teacher ID. And finally, we have a student courses table that is a mapping table to map the student ID to the associated courses that they are enrolled in. The rows for a student schedule can be fetched via a single query by joining the four tables. But in an application-centric model, developing apps using normalized views and tables is very flexible, but it's not always easy for developers. In this case, we can see there are four individual SQL queries required to access each of the underlying normalized tables from the database. The application developer is responsible for joining, filtering, and aggregating the data to render it in the appropriate format to meet the scheduling application. Ideally, the developer wants to build your schedule using a single database operation. So this is where JSON comes into play. JSON makes it extremely easy to represent the schedule in the appropriate data format. Here we can see a document for the student schedule for Jill. We can also see all of the relevant information for each of Jill's classes or courses as they are stored in an array, which is represented by the square brackets. It makes it very easy to map the information for each course in a single pane or tile for Jill's schedule as all of the relevant data, including the time, the room, and teacher is located in one place and can be retrieved in a single database call or get operation. Document databases are popular because they allow JSON documents to be easily accessed and stored using simple get and put APIs, which is an extremely lightweight model for accessing the underlying data. But document databases have their own limitations. When JSON is used to store student schedules, the course and teacher information is redundantly stored in each student schedule. For example, we can see here that both Jill and Jack are enrolled in Science 102, and the information for that class is duplicated. Duplicated data is obviously inefficient to store, expensive to update, and difficult to keep consistent, as you have multiple places in which you need to perform those operations. A successful application will inevitably add more use cases over time, and data duplication increases as the same data is now used in new use cases. For example, when adding a teacher schedule use case, we can see that there's now a redundant entry for the time and the classroom for both Jill as well as Anita for Science 102. The teacher schedule use case requires a new document shape with the teacher as the root, but shares some of the same course data as a student document. Since data is stored redundantly, changing the classroom for a course requires atomically updating many student schedule documents, as well as many teacher schedule documents. In this example, we can see that Science 102 has a new room for that same time period, and both documents will need to be updated independently of one another. Document database vendors recognize that data duplication is a problem and have added features that attempt to address this. The first step is documents can reference other documents. Using references, documents can be normalized into pieces to remove duplication, and then document queries can aggregate content from multiple documents into a single resulting document. So in this example, we can see that the student schedule document can be changed to reference a separate student schedule document instead of including it. And then reference a separate course document, which then references a separate teacher document. The simplicity of documents at the application level is now lost without gaining the power of SQL and relational at the database level. Performance suffers due to reference chasing and loss of shard locality. Referential integrity must now be enforced by every application. So hopefully you've seen that using a pure JSON application or JSON-based application has many benefits when the complexity of an application is somewhat simple in nature. Once an application 
becomes more complex in nature, a relational database and a relational application uh, become a much more beneficial way of solving uh, application problems. And the benefits of a relational model far outweigh the benefits that a JSON document uh, object store would have brought to the table. So really what we're looking for here is the uh, use case flexibility, queryability, consistency, and space e efficiency that a relational model brings you, along with the easy mapping to languages uh, and language types, as well as agile schema-less development, as well as hierarchical data formatting, as well as standard interchange format that a document model can bring to the table. So let's take a look at Oracle's JSON document relational duality feature that has been introduced in 23C. In this case, instead of choosing one or the other, we can get the benefits of relational plus documents. So in the JSON document relational duality model, data is stored as rows in tables to provide the benefits of the relational model as well as SQL access. Rows can also include JSON columns to store data whose schema is dynamic or potentially evolving. And data can be accessed as JSON documents to deliver the application simplicity of documents. JSON duality views declare the template, if you wish, for assembling normalized views into a JSON document. Here we can see that the view is accessing is the student table, um, and we're calling it student schedule. We can see that the student courses is the name value pair that consists of both a course and a teacher, and the course document maps to the course table, and the teacher table maps to, uh, or the teacher document maps to the teacher table. We can also see that the individual columns are associated with uh, name value pairs uh, in this uh, duality view. In addition to defining the document layout and hierarchy, we can also set updatability rules. So in this case, we're explicitly labeling the student courses as being at delete, at insert, at update. However, we're not explicitly labeling that for course and teacher, meaning that students can update student schedules, but not classes or teachers. We can also specify unnesting to say that when properties in that nested object should be unnested into the parent. So selecting from the student schedule duality view, accesses the underlying tables and returns Jill's schedule as a JSON document. This document has all the data needed by the use case, as well as the IDs needed to update the data. You can access this same view using SQL or document APIs. And in SQL, you can see we're using the dot object notation model to access that data. Uh, meanwhile, we're using a simple uh, value pair to uh, perform an operation through a package. So JSON duality views are extremely simple to access using REST. We can use a get document from the view. And furthermore, we can make any changes needed to that document and put that document back into the view. In other words, we can modify the object or the document using our REST APIs, uh, using the JSON document format. And when we make updates, those updates get pushed back into the underlying table uh, tables and the Oracle database is intelligent enough to deconstruct that document and apply those changes to the uh, related structures underneath. So if there was a parent-child relationship, or in this case, we have the class IDs and the student schedules, um, the underlying tables would be updated accordingly. The database automatically detects those changes in the new document and modifies those underlying rows. So all duality views that share that same data are immediately uh, able to reflect this change and developers no longer have to worry about inconsistencies. So JSON relational duality completes Oracle's support for all use cases for in-database uh, objects and documents. So developers can store data as relational, which is great when the data uh, schema is known and therefore they can access that data using the SQL APIs, or they can even access that data using the document API uh, if they wish to access that data as documents, and that would be via the JSON duality views. 
Developers, meanwhile, can store their data as documents, which is great for collections or table columns whose schema is dynamic or evolving. Once again, they can access that data in a relational format using the JSON data guide package to create relational views on top of JSON. And they can also access the data using ANSI JSON extensions to SQL, such as Oracle's uh, simple Oracle document access or the MongoDB API to uh, interpret and to intercept uh, application calls to a MongoDB uh, database, but intercept them and run them as an Oracle operation. JSON duality makes it easy to persist and operate on application objects as JSON, bridging the object relational mismatch. JSON duality views enable data to be transparently read and written as documents or as tables. And value-based concurrency control ensures that consistency across documents and tables is managed for you, enabling stateless APIs, interactive use cases, and mobile disconnected clients. So the key takeaways for document developers is that JSON duality delivers the development simplicity of JSON plus the use case scalability of the relational model. Document schemas can be specialized for each use case without creating data duplication or consistency issues. And developers can easily build document-centric apps on existing relational data and use all the advanced features of Oracle's converged database. The key takeaways for relational developers, meanwhile, is that developers can easily create SQL-centric applications or analytics on data that has been created by document-oriented apps. JSON duality is more efficient, centralized, and consistent than an object relational mapping model, and it enables simple access to all rows needed for an app use case in one single call and one round trip. If you're interested in learning all about Oracle JSON document relational duality firsthand, here are three live labs you should take a look at and try out for yourself. If you're interested in finding out more about Oracle JSON document relational duality views, take a look at the following resources. We have the live labs, as I've just mentioned on the previous slide. We also have a YouTube video that explains the whole concept. And we have some really good blog articles out there, as well as some very good uh, documentation. Um, and if you're interested in finding that uh, information right now through the documentation website, um, you'll have to look for uh, the Oracle 23C developer free release, um, and you'll find examples, code samples, syntax examples, as well as information about the architecture uh, that um, provides these capabilities. Thank you for attending this session. I hope you found it useful.